wanted to make a video to talk about my mill. So this is my do-it-yourself hobbyist CNC mill. The point is to be able to cut aluminum at reasonable material removal rates and to not be too expensive. I'm going to list out the parts that I used uh, and show you how you could potentially build one from scratch. I'm going to talk about these parts in three stages. The first are the frame components, the second are the motion components, and then the third are the electronics. I'm not going to include the cost of uh, some other elements, like I'm not going to include the cost of the e-stop that I have, the enclosure that I built, the tools I used, um, the laptop I used to drive the Gerbil controller, the cooling. I also have a 3D printer um, that I used to make some of the small parts for this. There are also cutting tools. I'm not going to include all those. I'm just going to include the, the parts on the base machine. So the first part here is the frame. If you strip down all the other parts, it's essentially just a base and a column. The base being a two and a half inch thick slab of aluminum, the column also being a two and a half inch slab of aluminum. Aluminum is not the best material to use for a machine base because it is uh, not damping. If you had something like cast iron, if you have the ability to cast epoxy granite at home, that would make it a better material. I hadn't done anything with that before. I don't have the right tools. I don't have the right knowledge to do it, so I didn't do it that way. I just used aluminum. The base is a aluminum bar stock that is 17 inches long, and then the column is a piece of bar stock that is 20 inches long. The bottom of the base is uh, has holes that are then counterbored to allow for some uh, M10 bolts to go through and into the column, and then I drill and tap those holes in the column. The next piece of the frame is if you look at uh, the base for the x-axis, this is sometimes called like a saddle, or you could call it a Y carriage. Uh, that is a 1 inch by 5 inch piece of aluminum that is 20 inches long. And then I also included in this frame category the fixture plates I use. So on the X axis, there's uh, the plate that gets moved uh, back and forth. That is a half inch by 6 inch piece of aluminum that's 10 inches long. And then they're also on the Z axis, I have two uh, additional frame pieces. One is the fixture plate there, which is again half inch by 6 inch. This one's 6 inches long. And protruding out from that is what I would call the head piece. And that's a three by four inch piece of aluminum that is six inches long. So I've got all the prices as I've been going, and here's the total price for those frame pieces. The next category are the motion components. So these are the bearings uh, and power transmission components. There are several sets of linear rails. So for each axis of motion, I have two linear rails and then four square linear bearing blocks for those rails. I use um, HGR 15, so they're 15 millimeter rails. And I use no name, cheap as I could find brand on eBay. I have two sets of 300 millimeter uh, long rails for the Y axis and the Z axis. And then the X axis uses 500 millimeter long rails. For the motion transmission, I'm using lead screws. I'm using cheap 8mm lead screws because they're inexpensive and they work well enough. They're not as good as ball screws in terms of rigidity, but they will do and they're a little bit lower profile uh, than the uh, ball screws. I use a two 350mm lead screws and bearings for the uh, Y and Z axes and then a 500mm lead screw and a set of flange bearings for the X axis. The bearings I'm using are cheapo, what you would call kind of roller skate bearings, 8mm bearings, in flange mounts. And these usually even come with the lead screws, so they're extremely inexpensive. The key to being able to use these inexpensive lead screws is having a good anti-backlash nut block. Uh, I use three of them uh, from the Open Builds part store. I also got to the point where I could make these myself, but $10 per nut block is a reasonable price. I have three flexible couplings that transition from the quarter inch motor shaft to the eight millimeters of the uh, lead screw. And then I also made uh, cheap bearing mounts, six in total from one inch square aluminum bar stock that is five inches long. And I cut that in half to get two, two and a half inch uh, one by one bearing mounts per axis. And to be able to make these, um, you do need to have a drill press 
to make these DIY bearing mounts, but they're very simple. You just have to drill some holes and you need uh, a few different sizes of drills and to be able to tap some holes, which are all tools you need to be able to put this thing together anyway. And that's it for the motion system. Here's the total for that. And then the next category are the electronic components. By far the biggest expense is the spindle and VFD kit. I used a kit that came with the spindle, uh, it came with the VFD, it came with collets, it came with a cable that was not very good, but sufficient. I used an air-cooled spindle because I didn't want to have to deal with one more part and additionally having water circulating through the spindle. All the cutting that I've done has worked great with air cooling. The spindle doesn't even get hot even if I'm running it at a little bit lower RPMs. Uh, you need a 24 volt power supply to be able to run all the electronics. I used a 360 watt power supply. For the stepper drivers, I used inexpensive TB6600 clone stepper drivers. These are 4 amps. I have also tried using more expensive DM542T stepper drivers, and those are even better. They sound uh, a lot quieter when they move. They have less vibration, but overall, just functionally in terms of performance, they're not that much different than the TB6600 from what I've seen. Like the finish hasn't changed or anything after changing to those. So the TB6600s being so much cheaper are what I'm going to recommend. To do the motion control, I use an Arduino Uno, and that's uh, just running Gerbil. I have an Arduino screw shield that I use to connect to the Uno to then allow me to wire in all the connections to the various directions, step, motor enable uh, for each stepper driver. And then I use two NEMA 23 175 ounce inch stepper motors for the X and Y axes and a uh, NEMA 23 269 ounce inch stepper motors for the Z axis because I thought I needed a little more uh, oomph. To enclose these electronics in, I have a simple 10 by 10 by 4 inch NEMA enclosure. Here's the total price for those parts. And then I have a few miscellaneous components. There's certainly all the hardware, all the bolts and nuts. Uh, I used a lot of M5 hardware, some M6 hardware. I didn't bother to count all the bolts and list the price here, so that's another uh, hidden price that will cost you something. I use some corner connectors to securely attach the head onto the Z fixture plate. I also bought some accordion rubber way covers to cover up the X, Y, and Z lead screw and linear rails so chips don't fall into them. And then I 3D printed some parts to help mount those way covers on and also to just uh, space out the stepper motors a little bit from the frame just to get the length right. These are kind of optional. But if you have a 3D printer, it's very useful for making these kinds of parts that are not structurally important that help you mount things to it. And that's it. The total price here, pretty reasonable. It's about $1,200 for everything. In retrospect, for this amount of money, you could almost get a much more capable manual mill, like a Grizzly G0704, and then use that mill and make yourself a CNC conversion kit for it. I think if I were going to do this all over again and I knew everything, I might just go that route because it would be a lot less work, and I think at the end I would have a little more capable machine. That said, I'm pretty happy with the result I got, and I think overall this is a pretty good machine for how much it costs. There are a lot of people that are wanting to mill aluminum, and the options are either a very inexpensive hobby grade router or get a Tormach or something. And there's not a lot of in between from a thousand dollar router and a $10,000 milling machine. So this is my attempt at making something that is a little more in between. It's not going to be as capable as a real mill, but it's going to be a lot better than a router. In terms of the capability of the machine, my typical cut for this machine will be a quarter of an inch deep and 0 0.0375 inches wide. I'll make that cut at about 30 to 40 inches per minute, and the finish is great. Uh, the cuts sound good. That's with a quarter inch end mill. I'm really happy with that material removal rate. I can make small parts, and it doesn't take me hours, it takes a few minutes. All of that said, I do want to add a disclaimer here. I'm not trying to sell this machine. I'm not trying to sell any part of this. Uh, I never post any affiliate links. I don't make any money off of this. And as a result, you have no guarantees about any of this being remotely uh, functional or buildable by yourself. I don't want someone to see this video and think that they can easily go out and make this and then get upset because, oh, you, I forgot to mention something. So big disclaimer, 
still, I think this is uh, interesting information that I wish I would have had when I was trying to make a do-it-yourself simple mill because I, I didn't find a lot on YouTube that was very accessible. So this is my attempt at that. You do need to learn certain skills. You need to have a drill press. If you have a horizontal uh, metal cutting bandsaw, that helps a lot. Uh, you need calipers, you need to know how to do layout and how to drill holes precisely in aluminum. If you can do all that, you can tap holes reliably. Those are the main skills that you need. I think that plus a 3D printer, you can build this no problem. But you'll probably have to make some changes. Maybe you'll make upgrades. Maybe instead of using my lead screws, you'll use ball screws. I'm really curious to see that, how that works out. One of the reasons I think I'm able to use these fairly low torque stepper motors is that a lead screw has very good back driving and that it's hard to back drive a lead screw. And so the motor doesn't actually have to hold that much. Uh, in a ball screw, it is much more possible to, to, to back drive it. So that would be an additional concern. You'd also need to have some way to raise the rails up or use taller rails to be able to fit the ball screw underneath. Anyway, that's my video about this. Please let me know if you do anything like this. Uh, if you do make something uh, your own mill, please make a video about it. Let me know. I'm really curious to see. And that's it. Thanks a lot.